sparing of cooperation between Europe and China. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gianluca, for, for this comprehensive presentation. Um, since we are uh, a little bit behind the schedule, I will suggest you have uh, Jin Jin first uh, go through her presentation, and then at the end, we will answer all the questions that have been um, uh, submitted through the Q&A section. Um, so, Jin Jin, all yours. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, just a moment. Let's try to share my screen. Okay. Yes, we can see it. Perhaps you want to uh, put it in the um, presentation mode. Yeah. Here we are. Perfect. Okay, uh, good morning uh, or good, good evening for the Chinese partners and good morning for the European partners. Uh, I'm quite happy to sharing our Nordic experience within the green uh, building transitions and the carbon neutrality 2030 strategies for you today. Uh, my, pre my presentation will be three parts. Uh, first one, I will just uh, briefing the latest uh, uh, Chinese carbon neutrality 2030 and 2060 strategies. And then I will uh, break into the green construction opportunities after COVID for the, for the broad and also for the Chinese uh, uh, partners. And uh, part three, we will be sharing uh, two of our case, uh, which is just uh, one of the cases just built in the Hubei province. Actually, it's only 80 kilometers uh, southwest of Wuhan city. And then we will share our other ongoing green industry park case in Changsha in Hunan province. Uh, hope uh, if you have any questions, just uh, uh, send an email or, or call us later. Uh, I'm located in Beijing, so uh, uh, I could talk to uh, fully on track on time. Uh, just uh, like in September uh, 22nd, uh, maybe most of you have been heard about that. Uh, we have been, uh, our president have been announced our latest uh, 2030 uh, carbon, uh, carbon, carbon uh, neutrality strategies. And um, the, the, we have uh, the Chinese climate uh, target, which goes through in the last 15 years, roughly in the, in the COP15 in Copenhagen. In the 2009, uh, China, we are first time uh, announced our climate target, which is uh, uh, summarized as uh, based on the O5 level. We are lowering, uh, we are lower uh, our CO2 emissions per unit GDP by 40 to 45 percent, and also we uh, kept our non-fossil fuel primary energy consumption to 15 percent. And by 2020, we have. Uh, uh, increasing our forest area by 40 million hectares and also uh, our forest stock volume will be 1.3 billion cubic from the 05 level. Uh, and then back to the 15, uh, we have been announced in the national development uh, target submitted for the UN uh, Secretary on the June that we will be picking our CO2 emissions by 2030 and then we will Try, make our best effort to pick earlier. And then also we have been uh, increasing our uh, CO2 emission uh, uh, density by 60 to 65%. And also we have been increasing our non-fossil fuel uh, primary energy consumption level by 20%. Uh, and in the latest uh, uh, announcement by the central government, uh, we can see that we have been we have been uh, even uh, even uh, increasing our our carbon uh, target by six uh, by over sixty five percent by the O five level, and then also we increasing our non fossil fuel primary energy level limit by twenty five, and also we double our wind and solar capacity uh, by installed capacity kilowatt by twenty thirty. So these are quite the uh, uh, aggressive green transition target for the green energy industry for China. 
uh, everyone knows China about that every five years, we have this, we call the five year plan national strategy. And right now this year from 2021 to 2025, we have our 14th five year plan. And actually due to the COVID-19 in the, in the 2020, um, a lot of the 14th five year plan have been renewed. And also like we have been announcing our uh, latest uh, national strategy for the carbon neutrality 2030 and then the uh, 2060. A lot of changes actually happen. Uh, we can see it almost overnight. Uh, the best word is like uh, we have been uh, working on the dual circulation, meaning that previously actually European would like to sell in, uh, online to China and right now need some kind of double, double circulation a system for the uh, for the money flow uh, and then we have the driving as Gianluca just mentioned in the last 30 years we have been uh, our urbanization rate has been achieving 61 percent in the 19 and we have close to 700 million people uh, living in the in the cities so we are uh, changing from the speed level driving to the quality uh, development for our cities and then also actually due to the COVID-19, we have been uh, put uh, seven years ahead about our uh, IT application, new database and 5G technology. And everyone, uh, you know, in China, we have one point, almost 1.1, 1.2 billion people using the smartphone. And during uh, the COVID times, we have been actually upgrading our uh, infrastructure for the for the for the 5G uh, for the 5G system. Later, I have a number for that, and then the, we have a modernization, and also we have the technology self dependent. Uh, as our president has been announcing this one belt one silk roads, uh, China is also trying to gradually uh, exporting our own like uh, EPC engineering experience or like the. Uh, finance mechanisms also like the like the yeah we bring the 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 quite a lot of turn, turnkey package uh to the to the one silk one belt countries uh so the 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 14th five year plan actually will be uh, set up a new cornerstone for the for the chinese we call it the new development and also the quality development uh, let's come focus on the climate target. Uh, maybe some of you know uh, aware about that. The previously, the climate uh, target was responsible by the NDRC, the National Development and the Reform Committee. And just uh, in the last year, December 2020, the, the the power shifting from the NDRC to the MEE Ministry of uh, uh, Environmental and Ecology. So right now it's. Uh, uh, um, is MEE is uh, taking over the, the, the climate uh, uh, strategies and also working on supporting the renewable energy development in the 14th five-year plan. So we have uh, we have our pledge the, the the policy part in this aspect. Like uh, the MEE will develop uh, the quantitative carbon intensity reduction target, uh, and also for each province for each cities. And also we will draft the specific environment and the climate uh, target and uh, for the city level, the, the, the country we will develop a 10 year action plan to cap the, the carbon emissions by 2030. And also we have uh, transitioned from the pilot to a unified national carbon market. Uh, maybe some of you are aware about that, the, the CDM, the carbon mechanism, which started in China, uh, around uh, 2003 and then end up around uh, 2015 uh, as a national uh, carbon market. But due to the the, the, the the slow agreement of Paris, then we have a bit uh, like a layoff of uh, late, uh, like uh, like a frozen time for three years. But now the, the government, the really central government is uh, starting on the unified uh, seven uh, different pilot uh, cities into a unified carbon market to reduce the carbon emissions. And also like the, just uh, in general fix, uh, the MEE published uh, uh, all, the, all the industries, uh, company names like uh, 2,225 uh, power, power companies, they have to submit the, their 
their emission reduction target in the 2020, and also they have to submit the, the, the carbon quotas for the, for the next five-year plan. Uh, and also the MEA has been uh, recently called for public comments about the renewable energy uh, plan, and also they have been laid out the seven priority areas, like uh, guaranteed energy security through, uh, through diversify the suppliers, developing sufficient storage, and also the safety infrastructure uh, and the improving logistics. And they also have uh, have a focus on the city level uh, to be uh, picking uh, CO2 before 2030, like uh, Shanghai uh, has been announced as the first city in China to say Shanghai will be the carbon neutral by 20, 2025. Uh, and also the government is developing a market-based trading system for used energy and also reduce the energy, uh, energy emissions. And also the, the MEA is focused on construction, the smart energy system, energy storage and energy digitization. And also like um, uh, market uh, oriented energy reforms. And also the last sector priority area is still have been focused on the international corporations, uh, especially with the, with the European countries. Uh, we do as what we planned, uh, as we can see here by the connected uh, energy mix structure by in the last uh, last uh, 10 years we make this uh, this diagram we can see that uh, by 20 actually uh, end of 2020 we have been connecting non fossil fuel energy by almost 20 uh, percent exclude the hydropower so the uh, since the Chinese re renewable energy law uh, taking into enforcement back to the 2007, uh, in the last 13 years, we can see our energy, our, our renewable energy uh, connection percentage has been increased around 1 to 1.5 percent every year as our plant. Um, let's see the, the, the how can we achieving our, our uh, 1.5 or 2 degree uh, scenarios uh, by 2030 and by 2060. So this is uh, a latest analysis from the Tsinghua ICC SD. Uh, He Jiankun and also the previous minister of uh, of the of the climate, uh, Xie Zhenghua. So we can see from this uh, uh, diagram that uh, under the 1.5 degree target, uh, we will reduce 90% uh, uh, of our emission reduction uh, from compared with 05 level by the by the uh, 2050. And also in this uh, in this sector, we expect that there will be a requirement of additional uh, one, one, 138 trillion uh, RMB investment, which is around 2.5 percent of the GDP per year on this uh, uh, climate uh, investment. Um, yeah, and then the, to achieving the Europe uh, Green Deal target uh, with uh, reducing the 20, 50 to 55 percent by 2030, actually we need a uh, we need a, a annual investment. We expect it will be around 260 billion uh, Europe uh, uh, euro. Uh, these are the the uh, statistics yearbook and also the latest uh, research uh, re re report from the from the uh, from the Rocky Mountain Institute for the ETC China. So the 70 trillion uh, investment for this uh, new energy green infrastructure will be uh, in seven categories. Uh, mostly will be in the renewable resource ut utilization, as I mentioned before, uh, the renewable energy installation uh, installed capacity will be doubled uh, compared with the 13th five year plan. And then for the end user, uh, electri electrification will be also taking a big certain amount. And uh, as far as we can see right now, the, a lot of North Chinese cities right now already put up the slogan for uh, hydrogen city. So uh, a lot of cities has been already uh, ambitious to set up this uh, hydrogen, uh, we call the power to X. Uh, slogan. So they want to uh, heavily invest in the hydrogen uh, to the and also connected with the solar system. So the government will give the first the government will give the subsidy on that. Second about the the finance is also uh, uh, very good with the North City with the heating systems. Uh, 
And also like uh, last one will be the digitization system also will take, um, uh, take around uh, one, uh, 11 trillion for the, for, the, for the investment. So around 12%. So actually, uh, we can see that the, the, the new uh, carbon target really driving the whole city to the greener and also like we can achieve 80% of the emission reduction by this uh, investment, 70 trillion investment, and then we can bring the 30 million uh, new jobs for the, for the green jobs. Um, building and the construction, and no doubt about that, uh, no matter uh, on the building uh, construction sector or on the building operational sector, uh, it's, it's taken around one third of the emission reductions, both in China and globally. Um, this is the Chinese number in the last uh, 10 years, we analysis the, the, the building uh, emission uh, emissions uh, category. Uh, we have uh, we have a steady uh, steady uh, growth for the electricity uh, uh, power uh, power supply side, and we have uh, quite actually we have a big uh, gap on the natural gas. Uh, I think this is mostly because uh, in Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei, because we have this uh, clean air uh, blue air strategy in the last uh, uh, five years. So government has been turning the coal fired uh, small coal fired plants to the uh, natural gas fire system. So we can see the, the, the big uh, increase on the natural gas uh, utilization for the building sector. Uh, but to be honest, this is not very stable. It, yeah, a lot of re re reasons. Uh, if anyone interested, we can elaborate later. Uh, for the coal and oil and the biomass, it's a kind of stable. And as we can see from the, from the analysis. Uh, in the 14th five-year plan, we uh, we actually really uh, set up the as we working on the frontier of the green uh, green building design and the green building uh, architectural design and the detailed design sector. We, we can really see people are taking seriously right now after the COVID. Uh, firstly, the the developers or the contractors basically put up the carbon target from day one. Uh, a lot of our clients has been asking. Um, what is our uh, what is my project the, the emission numbers you need to tell me the baseline from day one and then they really starting to think about how can they reduce the emission reductions uh, through different uh, strategies along the way uh, and also we can see that uh, uh, because we have 20% uh, uh, of the non-fossil fuel uh, uh, electrical system right now so uh, people are not kind of uh, I think people are start to uh, really thinking of how to integrate with the renewables. I think like 10 years ago in the market, people are quite afraid like, ah, do I have enough? Do I have a mature technology for PV, for wind, for heat pump, for storage, for battery, for e-vehicles, for chargers? But actually technology right now is not, uh, it's not an issue that much. Uh, the, the, the contractor are more focused on the uh, system uh, design, how can the smart, uh, like, like, like us, how can we give them an integrate uh, low energy solutions? And then they can see, okay, how can I reduce my energy uh, consumptions from the day one? Uh, so this is, uh, we can see the market really have a lot of changes from the, uh, from the COVID time and also like our new, uh, new uh, climate target coming out. And then also we can see a lot of lifestyle training, lifestyle change, uh, like uh, people thinking about how can they access the site from the from the city level and how can they attract the, the high, like the high talents to work in the in the company and also like uh, uh, people are serious thinking about uh, like the building efficiency, how can they how can they, they are quite aware about energy consumption. I can see now uh, more and more in the, in the daily life. Um, and here we have, uh, we have uh, 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 statistics that to show that actually uh, for us, for China now, uh, 11, 11, almost 11.6% uh, of our building are considered as the green building, like Gianluca also mentioned, uh, also uh, discussed in the last uh, 
almost uh, 20 years, we start our eco city plan, garden city plan, green city plan, and the construction. And we have uh, right now we have um, around uh, 200 million, uh, 200 million GFA green floor area for green building uh, under the different kind of the green building standards. And right now we can still see this trend has been more like uh, the 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 government, uh, not government. I think before it's like government trying to promote this green building ideas and the concept and the standards. But now we can see it's like the, the market, they want the green building by themselves because they can see the, the values. And also they can see if they put their standard in the, in the right way, actually uh, they don't need to, to spend a lot of extra money, but they can still get a good building. Uh, green recovery, uh, everyone talking about that. Uh, we also have a very nice figure and most of you, you know, uh, uh, familiar or not, uh, not familiar, but most of you know about China is we are quite, actually quite proud. Uh, last year, even though after the totally lockdown of the country for four, four months, we still like achieved the 2.3% of our GDP, national GDP growth as a, as a final result. And and also we can see from the manufacturing investment and the real estate development, real estate investment, and also like in infrastructure investment, uh, around the Q3 uh, summertime, uh, we are almost back to our, our investment level before the COVID. So, um, so yeah, I think it's, we're quite moving faster and uh, to, to recovering our construction side also, and also drive the, drive the, the, the new new buildings and investment. Uh, something about the, the latest uh, uh, regulations, like uh, like Gianluca also mentioned about uh, uh, not only in the passive house uh, lead, uh, lead system, BRIM system, DGMB, and uh, yeah, actually China, we have been learned the most of the famous green building standards from the world, US, UK, uh, Germany, uh, yeah, Nordic countries. So uh, from 19th, we also published our own called the uh, uh, ultra, low, low, uh, ultra low energy uh, standards, uh, which is the enforcement this year. Uh, this is like a super, we call it a super low energy house. Uh, it's a more, uh, it's like a combined version of the uh, green building and the passive house, uh, especially for North China, is quite meaningful. We have we can reduce our our heating ventilation system dimensions a lot, but in the meantime, we can also increase uh, increase the comfort level, indoor comfort level. But then also we have uh, we have a lower energy uh, consumption, uh, and we can see the most of the most of the policies and also the projects are located in the located in the Hebei, Beijing, and, and Henan, Shandong, yeah. Okay, now I'm uh, sharing a two hour our case uh, just to give you some inspirations. Uh, as Nordic, we have our smart design package. So from the day one, uh, we're trying to integrate the, the, the different, uh, like the site, uh, sustainable sites, sustainable energy, and the water system and life cycle. Uh, green building materials and also the indoor environment. So we try to uh, um, uh, put this, uh, integrate these different uh, uh, multiple priorities in our in our planning stage, and then give the baseline uh, baseline target for the for the project. And then the, during the project development, uh, detailed development, we trying to uh, uh, further uh, detail our, our design in the different projects. Uh, we have been also applied our, our SD smart design package for all our projects. Uh, we have our baseline uh, defined from the day one. So the client knows how much carbon emission uh, this project is going to have. Uh, and then we say, okay, now can we do something better? Can we improve your system? Can we optimize your, your uh, can we optimize your your uh, air kindness? Can we can we help you to to better the ventilation system? Can we optimize your daylighting system and also trying to um, uh, do the facade uh, optimization, etc. So so we are as uh, as uh, engineers uh, work together with architects trying to do this uh, 
uh, also like quite the way we do it in Denmark, like uh, we can we do a uh, synergies between the architects and the engineers and the reduce energy consumption. And then finally, uh, some of the projects, like what I mentioned, we can see the client is they want the, 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 the carbon neutrality, they want the, the, the zero carbon buildings or campus. And then they want to know how much cost they are going to invest in their project. So we also give the uh, different scenarios based on different uh, uh, ambitious level for the project. Our uh, the, the SD uh, schematic design package, and then we trying to um, the old time that uh, for the building itself, uh, for the contractors mo mostly maybe focus uh, on the function, safety, efficiency, and investment, but actually. Uh, we can see gradually more in the market the people uh, the the contractor are most uh, are, are also like to willingness to pay for the branding sustainability smart social quality and uh, and sharings and participation and also like the like the hazard response so so we 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 develop this sd package and then they can choose okay which element they can consider and which can they uh, optimize their 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 design system. Uh, this is the largest uh, biomass power plant. Uh, we just uh, uh, the, the the power plant was commissioning last uh, last November in the at the full scale. Yeah, the power plant as you can see here, it's um, it's it's um, traditionally it's 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 a very yeah, the biomass is quite uh, dusty and also like. Uh, energy infrastructure, but we trying to um, make this power plant, uh, which is visually uh, impact, uh, less impact. And also uh, we make the, 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 the building very compact and also like uh, uh, it brings a lot of uh, uh, build environment uh, for, the, for the people working here. Uh, this is the terminated design. Uh, the biomass stores is here, and then the, we have the boilers, and we have the we have the dormitories, and the the used to be a very lousy, dusty environment. But we make the facade design, and to make the uh, coverage of the of the biomass storms, so it's uh, it has much less uh, air pollution, and also give a better uh, working environment for the people working here. Uh, and then we have uh, we have carefully selected the, the the facade and the materials, and also like the, we make the modular design, so it's much easier for them to make the the, the same type of building components, and also save a lot of costs for the construction. Uh, and also when we choose the materials, we choose the, this um, uh, strong and also like low, low maintenance uh, materials uh, for the for the for the operational phase so for the long term uh, uh, life cycle uh, maybe in the in the beginning the uh, we have been calculated in the beginning the the contractor is spending around around um, one 1.5% of the total investment for making the facade but in the future actually uh, first one they saving the building uh, cost uh, because we make the we make the power plant uh, much less, uh, we make it much more uh, compact, and also like the 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 flow is much more li linear and also much more easier to use. Uh, and then the in the future also they can much reduce their their environmental impacts to the neighborhood, and also the long term cost is maintenance cost is also quite low. So in the overall time, it's a, it's a quite a good investment for the contractor as a, as a green transition. And this is the, the final build uh, renderings and uh, we have been using like uh, perforated aluminum plates and then we make the, the exposed concrete walls and then also like, uh, yeah, we make this uh, uh, aluminum uh, plate to, to make, the, make the building make the power plant very compact and also like a, a low maintenance cost. Uh, this is another project uh, also uh, constructed uh, last year. It's in Datong, uh, around, the, around the 300 kilometers uh, south of west of Beijing. Uh, Datong, we used to be called the coast, coast city, 
uh, because Datong has uh, rich, uh, is very rich for the coals, and Datong is like a supply the sixty uh, percent of the of the power for Beijing. Uh, Datong is uh, is is um, uh, have the ambition to be the the carbon neutral uh, city and also like the clean energy city. And this is a project that we delivered uh, in front of the new government of Datong city. Uh, this is uh, like uh, we applied our low energy, digital energy, uh, low carbon digital energy system solutions. Uh, we integrate with the green building design solutions and also like uh, we integrate with the uh, roof panels and also like uh, uh, connect uh, with the uh, slow mobility system. Uh, and also we applied uh, all of these buildings in the plot is uh, a green building uh, in China certified. And here we also made a zero carbon uh, showroom here. Uh, another project we're sharing is uh, in Changsha. Uh, it's in a, still in a very early stage. So I will just uh, also give some the positioning of the project. Uh, Changsha is uh, also the uh, aiming as uh, as the Chinese uh, 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 clean energy uh, city, uh, economic or trade zone. And they are looking for the they are looking for the uh, renewable energy so solutions. So we are working on design the the uh, the clean energy supply system, and then the, trying to use the surplus energy from the industries uh, to the buildings, and also we try to use the green energy from the power grid to charge the the, the vehicles e vehicles, and also we are applying some uh, we call the uh, micro uh, micro energy uh, grade for the for for offsetting the the energy consumption of the park. Uh, the site is about uh, one thousand mu, so it's about uh, sixty seven hectares. Um, and uh, this uh, this plot is uh, uh, is the strategy is uh, to have four uh, C. We call it the the, the pilot demonstration for the circular economy for the uh, for the for the energy uh, energy circle for the synergy circle and for the uh, economist circle and then it's uh, it's going to attract the the, the clean energy uh, seeds to the to the projects and also it's going to be have the we call it the eco park of the park. So this park would be mostly uh, carbon neutral and also um, uh, would be uh, uh, attract uh, like uh, the high talents to working here. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, mostly my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jin Jin, um, and thank you very much, Gianluca, before. Uh, we have a few minutes to go through a, a couple of questions that have been submitted through the Q&A. Uh, Gianluca and Jin Jin, I'm not sure if you want to follow in a specific order or you would like to give priority to, to some of them. Um, no, I think it's up to you. You can uh, pick the one. Uh... Okay. Uh, th to those that uh, we are not able to answer today, uh, you will receive a reply by email, so do not worry about it. So uh, I will take one uh, submitted uh, at the beginning, actually, during uh, Gianluca's presentation. But Jin Jin, if you want to also uh, provide any additional feedback, feel free to do so. How sensitive is the Chinese population regarding green cities? Is it a factor taken into account when deciding to move to a city? Maybe it is a way to attract quali qualified workforce workforce on a local scope you go i go <laughs> you prefer jin jin uh i'm just i'm just trying to read these uh, questions um yes actually i think uh, the the graduates has been uh, more and more uh, choosing the we call the uh, you know, because China, we have uh, our universities uh, locate, a lot of them locate like in Beijing, Shanghai, and Xi'an, and the big cities, Nanjing. But when they choose to work, maybe they will work in the different cities. Um, as like us, we trying to hire the people, uh, like livability actually is a seriously uh, factor they, they 
taking into consideration. They will think that the city green enough. Of course, the first one, they will think whether they can get a very good job, the high salary pay the job. But uh, the green factors, the livability factors, the housing price, the the you know university, the 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 the, the hospital resource, all of this has been seriously taking the, the new graduate, they will think this as uh, as choose the cities. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, from my side, I totally agree with Jinjin. Uh, uh, sometimes there is a matter also of choosing where living within the same city. So <clears throat> as I was mentioning, uh, Chinese are more and more aware about uh, air pollution and for instance of livable cities and so forth. So uh, the fact that the, the government is building uh, new areas, uh, uh, new district, more sustainable, it's done also because people uh, are frustrated from the traffic, for instance, uh, uh, from local pollution, and consequently they will try to find a new good quality uh, district because they know that there, the daily life, uh, it's better rather than in our district, for instance. Yeah, actually we can see the, like, I can just comment a little bit, like uh, like China, we have this uh, tier one, tier two, and tier three, and tier four cities, not just from the GDP perspective, but from like, uh, we call it the livability factor of China. Actually the livability green sustainability is, uh, is a serious, so the serious factors uh, like uh, in Chengdu and Hangzhou, because they are really nice and uh, green and the uh, housing price is low. So they attract uh, so many fresh graduates into these cities. So so actually it's quite, uh, I think increasing the green and also sustainable, it's like uh, the the city IP, I can see to attract uh, the new talents. Uh, also the, of course, the, the future of the city, if you can attract the, the young high talent to living here and working here, of course, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And also actually from the same person, uh, does the government also give incentives to industrials for factory constructions, for instance, like they do for new residential buildings? Uh, yes. I mean, it, it, it depends a lot of industries, but uh, for instance, uh, I, there are several examples of, in, of industries that uh, receive incentives in order to upgrade their system, their machineries, uh, in terms of reduction, for instance, of uh, energy that is used for the production or the amount of water that is used for the production and so forth. It depends a lot of, uh, on uh, the kind of industry. Uh, so in the past, for instance, uh, a lot of incentives were well given in another sector, for instance, painting and leather sector, where factories receive a lot of incentives in order to improve the quality of their production. And the same is done, for instance, in the construction sector, uh, because there are more and more stringent laws regarding, for instance, uh, construction waste. So, for instance, all the companies that are involved in the construction sector, uh, e usually factories already present on the market, they receive some sort of incentives in order to upgrade the quality of uh, their factories. For newly developed factories, of course, following, following the legislation, all the different legislations are recently approved, of course, uh, th there are a lot of new uh, regulation, Jinjin talk about it, uh, for instance, a noisy level in terms of uh, environmental emissions and so forth that factories need to take into account. And in some cases, more rather than uh, national level at the provincial level, there are some specific incentives, but it depends on the local industry. Yeah, I also would like to just be comment on this uh, from Gianluca that like the like the eco park project we like the biomass power plant we made in Tianjiang in Hubei, uh, the the our our clients they they because they they do this kind of better environmental the facade design, so they apply some uh, subsidies from the local government and then they will give them because it's uh, it's a green energy heating resource. 
and it's also because they fulfilling the they do the demonstration for how can this kind of urban infrastructure uh, in industry industry facility integrated with urban. So they re receive some uh, fundings to support these uh, initiatives. And also like uh, just be a bit more elaborate, maybe like uh, in the e-vehicles in Shenzhen, if you are if you are focused on the on the Shenzhen area, uh, government is giving a lot of subsidy on the e-vehicles uh, manufacturer, for example, and also like the like the um, uh, batteries for the for the e-vehicles. So if you produce some. Uh, yeah, batteries or for the e-vehicles, you can receive a lot of uh, quite of subsidy for the manufacturer uh, perspective. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we've run out of time, but I would like to thank again uh, the speaker, Gianluca Jinjin. Uh, it was a great cooperation as always, and a pleasure from our side. Also to our organizer, uh, uh, Wen uh, 